pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. All right, to begin, off, to begin this morning, we have a presentation for our Claremont County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And I turn it over to you, Dan. Oh, yeah, we got to have the prop. There you go, that's right. Can I have that one when you're done? Absolutely, I yes. need one from my yes, house. Absolutely, so, yeah. yes. We have more. We have a few more. So. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. So, <laughs> so, well, good morning. I'm Dan Otke. I'm superintendent with the Claremont County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And I'm appreciative again this morning to be able to uh, do a quick presentation about uh, our upcoming replacement levy, Issue 5. Uh, we're better, better part of uh, just about two weeks away, so it's yeah. coming up quickly here. So, um, again, appreciative. We've been sharing um, kind of our story a little bit about, you know, some of our services. And uh, if you recall, about a month ago, we had an opportunity where a, a mother uh, came down and did her presentation related mm -hmm. to the services she received for, through early intervention. And then we also uh, talked, had a mother come and speak to her experience related to transition services for her son that's transitioning from um, school to adult uh, to the adult world. This morning, I am um, distinctly honored to um, introduce you to Rocky, Rocky Arnett, um, and we're, we're taking that life map road and continuing that on into the adult services world, and, and Rocky's been receiving some services um, in that arena for, for a few years, and had a chance to speak to him. Um, we have a group that uh, meets, they're called the People in Action Group. Um, they're all about self-advocacy, self-determination. Rocky was at that meeting, it's better part of a couple weeks ago, and I was talking with him and, and he said, you know, he came up to me and said, what can I do to help with the levy campaign? And so I said, well, I got, a, I got something for you here. So, um, so he was very agreeable this morning to come up and maybe share a little bit about um, his story and maybe just uh, advocate for the levy. So, um, and one interesting fact about Rocky that uh, we talked about this morning is he is a, a 1980 graduate of our Wildy School program up there in Owensville, which ties right into when this levy was passed that we're ask, asking to replace the better part of 36 years ago. So Rocky is a 36-year uh, graduate of, of the wild, 30 from wild, somewhere in that range there. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> I might have had my math wrong there, but in terms of the uh, from Wildy program um, and has received services. Also with him today is Judy, his mom, so we appreciate they, them coming out this morning. So Rocky, you want to come up and, and uh, introduce yourself and maybe share a little bit about um, what you wanted to share about this morning. So. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad I'm here this morning. My name is Rocky Arnett. Um, I graduated in 1980 at Wadi School, and I'm 55 years old. And I got me a new. I got a job. I'm working at K Run Farm, and uh, I'm in the Special Olympics and everything, and. Uh, my hobby is going to church. Uh, I, I'm the basketball coach for uh, for handicap. Uh, we won our last we won our last game yesterday. Uh, we beat uh, uh, Mason 32 to 13 oh, yesterday. Oh, good. And uh, it's that coaching that did it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, when I was in the Special Olympics, I was about 10 years old. I was done uh, track and field and everything, and uh, now now I got a heart problem now. Now I got a uh, a pacemaker and a federator in me right now, and I had about oh about three about three years, and uh, I go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night, and. Uh, in uh, about 21 years, we went, me, my mom, and my dad, we went to uh, Florida. Now we sold our place down there. Now we're here for good. And I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm here and, and everything. Thank you very much. Where do you go to church? I go to, uh, I go to South Dare Church in Church of Christ okay. in, in Bethel. Mm -hmm. And my Christian. And I got baptized 
and where I was in Florida and everything. Well, that's awesome. Rocky, what's a K Farms? Is that a, a local farm? Say what? You say K Farms is where you're working? Oh, okay. okay. Um, I work in, in the greenhouse. Okay. And uh, I work three days. I work three days a week. I work Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And uh, we get paid every two weeks. We get paid. Now, this Friday, we get paid this Friday. And after that, on the 20th, we get paid again. Good. So you have a green thumb. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. I love it there. I love it. Three days a week, I get up at seven o'clock in the morning, and everything. Yeah. You know, and you can't had no, you can't had no no beer at all. <laughs> you had to shave clean. So a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, I went to work and my boss came up to me. He named me Jim and and he said to me he said uh, he said to me he said Rocky we got uh, rules here. And I say, what kind of rule? He say, well, you can't have no, uh, no beer. So I came home to work, and I told mom. I say to my mom, I say, mom, I got in trouble today. He, she said, she said, like what? <laughs> I said, I can't have no beer. And my boss said to me, say, now Rocky, I'm going to tell you this. If you have full beer, don't come back. <laughs> well, I had to shave it off. <laughs> So I'm glad I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm here and, and everything. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for you. talking. Appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, Rocky. I appreciate Yay. Well, I appreciate Rocky taking some time this morning and his mom uh, taking the time this morning to come down. He had mentioned, you know, he wanted he needed to get back to work this morning, so I told him it wouldn't take too long. He's getting <laughs> get back to work, but we we did appreciate him coming out and advocating. Um, advocating for the individuals um, in this county that receive services um, through uh, through Claremont DD and our and some of our partners. He mentioned Cane Run Farm Residential Concepts Incorporated. They're in uh, Williamsburg there, and they provide services. Um, so, and there are some local dollars that go into supporting Rocky to be able to attend that program. So. So we certainly appreciate the opportunity this morning. Again, uh, we uh, ask for uh, everyone's support on issue five coming up here in a couple weeks. Um, it is a replacement levy of our uh, two continuing levies that were originally passed in 1979 and 1980, as Rocky had shared this morning. So uh, by doing that, it'll generate the needed resources for us to continue our mission um, and to address some growing waiting lists. So, so thank you very much. Hey, Rocky, do you want Thanks. everybody to vote for the levy? Yes. Okay. He wrote for us. Okay. In 1980, that's when he first registered to vote. He came home and said, Mom, i got to register to vote. And he's been voting ever since. No, oh, that's awesome. And Mom, thanks for all the influence you've had mm -hmm. with him as well. He's the oldest of seven. I'm the best one they got. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa knew that was coming. <laughs> no doubt there, right? That's great. If everybody will excuse us. He needs to get to work. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. And you look good clean shaven, too. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. We'll just Did you want to get a picture? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get a picture. I never thought about that. Sorry. All right, Rocky, get up here. Up this way. We're going to get a picture right okay. in the center. Okay. Oops. Oops. Oh, sorry. Like we can almost put this out here. How about just stand right here? Mom? Just stand on one side. We're putting that Mom? Mom? Get on. This is coming, huh? This is coming. Okay. Balance things out a little bit. Absolutely. We'll do a little bit of a wall. One, two, Thanks, Rocky. Yeah. Hey, good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, I've seen you too. You take care of yourself. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy now. Vote for us, okay? Oh, don't, don't worry. Vote <laughs> twice. Vote twice. Have a good day. Thank you. And I will vote for you. Thanks, Judy. You're welcome. See you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
All right, David, if you don't mind, we're going to deviate a little bit from the agenda and go to item number six so we can get Dr. Treon um, back to work. Brian? I've got a okay. okay. Oh, no, we don't let him earn his money. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I think the purpose is to discuss a uh, memorandum of understanding between the Claremont County Coroner's Office and Hamilton County Coroner's Office. And what the memorandum does is essentially put into black and white the uh, agreement that we've been working under for the previous several, many, many years. Uh, key points in the document are that um, Hamilton County Coroner's Office will provide our autopsy services, and more specifically, at what cost. Uh, per autopsy, uh, the charge is $1,500, which is fairly uniform uh, um, cost across the uh, state in those facilities that do a uh, contract to other counties. Uh, additionally, uh, there is a cost of $600 for each toxicology only case. Uh, and then the documents also, their storage fees, uh, $45 for the first day, $25 for every day thereafter. Um, uh, I don't think there's much ambiguity regarding the document. It's fairly straightforward and really what we've been operating under for the last many years. Many years. Brian, the, I know Cincinnati's had some issues and needing to rebuild their, their facilities. Mm -hmm. where, where does that stand, do you know? Uh, I'm not into serious. Hamilton County uh, politics. However, I understand okay. that the issue has been put on the back burner. Okay. Uh, they were looking at, I think, going into the uh, old Western Hills Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a new hospital built, and that was now vacant. Um, and my understanding is that uh, that's no longer okay. an option. Okay. Um, they're the busting fact. at the seams. They certainly could be more timely in their services to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do not see other counties as an option simply because of the distance. What, what happens like in a Brown County or Adams County or Clinton County? Are they all going to Cincinnati as well? Um, well, it, it really depends on the geography. Okay. I think uh, uh, Brown does go to Hamilton County. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure Adams does as well. Uh, but then you kind of get out to the so eastern yeah, portion and they might be closer to Montgomery. Columbus or Montgomery. So. Is there a motion then to execute the uh, memorandum of understanding between um, our county coroner and the Hamilton County coroner as recommended? I'll make a motion for item six. I'll second that. Sheebel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Dr. Treon, thank you. Yes. For I get a picture? <laughs> What's that? Do I get a picture? <laughs> you want one? No. <laughs> thank you. Hi, right, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Do we want to do the presentation, or you want to just go into the no, agenda? Let's go right down. Let's go right down. The agenda, okay. Uh, item number one. Seven. You are on. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kevin Cappers. I'm project manager with the Water Resources Department. Uh, to I have two items for you today. Uh, first of which, uh, for subdivision. Uh, water and or sewer extension maintenance bonds at the recommendation of Heath Wilson and concurrence of Lyle Bloom. Uh, first of which, sewer maintenance bond, I don't know if you read these item by item mm -hmm. usually, uh, sure. $2,918.89 uh, sewer main extension bond for a subdivision at 3564 State Route 125. Uh, sewer main extension bond in the amount of $5,600 for the reserves at Liberty Crossing in Union Township, water main extension bond in the amount of $1,000 for Weber's Crossing subdivision in Miami Township, and finally, a sewer main extension bond in the amount of $3,500 at Willow's Bend subdivision in Miami Township. Is there a motion then to um, authorize the release of the reference maintenance bonds and to accept extensions into the county system as recommended. I'll make a motion for item one. I'll second that. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Pratt. Yay. And item two, please. All right. Uh, the final item I have for you today is uh, my recommendation with the concurrence of uh, Chris Rowland, the assistant sanitary, sanitary engineer, uh, is to adopt the resolution determining to make improvements and to approve the request to advertise 
for bids for the State Route 132, State Route 48, State Route 28 water main replacement project. And this segment of uh, water main is about 9,500 feet. Uh, it was identified for replacement because of the age and the size. Uh, the existing water main is uh, six inch and eight inch cast iron. And it's gonna be pr replaced primarily with 16 inch uh, ductile iron. And this replacement will ensure a continued level of service for present and future development. Is there a motion then to adopt resolution number 28-16 as recommended? So moved. Second. Shield. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, you have item number three. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Bob Sander, Human Resources. Uh, I'm representing the um, uh, Water Resources Department. Item three is a recommendation of Ile Bloom, uh, Director of Utilities, uh, with the concurrence of uh, Thomas Iagova, Assistant County Administrator, to adopt the revised table of organization for the Claremont County Water Resources Department, to add the position of one unfunded WRD maintenance technician, uh, technician one classification 49211, Pay range 10 within the Water Resources Department Maintenance Division is outlined in Exhibit A, attached here to and uh, made a part thereof, effective 229.16. Commissioners, this is a result of um, an employee being promoted to specialist who requested in writing that they return to the job that had been filled in the meantime. So we're temporarily creating this job and then um, uh, later on we'll do another table of organization change uh, eliminating one of the uh, specialist jobs mm -hmm. so the effect is uh, there's no bottom line effect to it and if the commissioners wish there is a a PA available uh, as an add-on afterwards okay is there a motion then to adopt the revised table of organization for the water um, resources Department, as recommended. I'll make the motion for item three. I'll second that. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Item four, please. Item four is a recommendation of John Cascaden, Director of Department of Public Safety Services, with my concurrence to award to bid and execute the contract for services for maintenance and repair services for generators located at Clermont County's tower sites. Pursuant to specifications, therefore, the Buckeye Power Sales at Black Lake, Ohio, for the lowest and best bid received on 10 1 2015, and so currently extended on 12 2 2015 and 1 21 2016 for an annual total not to exceed $15,991, effective upon execution for a period of three years, with the option to renew the reference contract for additional three years in one year increments pursuant to compliance with terms and conditions, contingent upon received the original Ohio Farmers Insurance Performance Bond, power of attorney dated on 225 and a release of the purchase order required in concert with requisition dated 1230 2015. Is there a motion then to make the award of bid and execute the contract for services with a contingency as recommended? So moved. Second. Shubel. Yes. Yay. Steve, is that performance bond something new? Uh, have we always done that for service maintenance? Depends on the kind of contract it is, but it's, we've, you know, some we have and some we don't. Depends on the requirements and we, when we put out the proposals. In this case, we did. So we, we've added that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Item 5, please. Item 5 is recommendation of John Cascaden, Director of Public Safety Services, with my concurrence to reject all bids received on 10 1 15 and subsequently extend on 12 Two of 15 and 121 of 2016 for maintenance and repair services for uninterruptible power supplies at Clermont County Tower sites, pursuant to in compliance with terms and conditions of public bidding. Therefore, uh, we had gone out for bids for both the generator report and the uh, support and the uninterruptible UPS support, and we had issues, contractual issues, so uh, they're requesting that we reject all these bids and they'll be coming back in the future to re advertise. Is there a time frame on the re advertisement? I suspect the next two weeks. Is there a motion then to reject all the bids um, for the contract, I mean for the service as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. All right, item seven, please. 
Item 7 is the recommendation of Tim Rudd, Clermont County Municipal Clerk of Courts, with my concurrence to authorize Mr. Pratt, President of the Board, to execute a purchase agreement by and between the County of Claremont and Neopost USA, Connecticut, for the E-Certified Connector Annual Support Agreement at a rate of $1,320 for a period of 131-2016 to 130-2017, which is in concert with the acquisition and installation of the print machine software to be utilized in the mailing of documents in concert with the Court View Case Management System, Ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on 12, 17, and 14, pursuant to in compliance with terms and conditions. Is there a motion then to execute the reference purchase agreement between the county and Neopost USA Inc. as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Pratt. Yay. Eight, please. I made a request from various departments and joint professional organizations and to authorize payment of the annual dues pursuant to Section 325.21 of the Ohio Revised Code and to authorize reimbursement of routine travel expenses. The Claremont County Facilities Management Department, Errol Lloyd, the National Fire Protection Association for $175. Is there a motion then um, to approve joining the, joining the referenced organization, pay the dues, and authorize the reimbursement of our routine travel expenses as recommended? I'll make a motion for item eight. Second. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Our training and travel, nine, please. This week we have the Claremont County Court of Common Pleas, Domestic Relations Division, Penny Ann Gates, two days, Mount Sterling, Ohio, the Deer Creek State Park Lodge instructor for a new magistrate's orientation, total estimated cost not to exceed zero. We have Penny Gates, one day, Cincinnati Bar Association, presentation of Cincinnati Bar Association Domestic Relations Committee, estimated not to exceed zero. And Penny Ann Gates, four days, in Dusk, Ohio, for the Association of Magistrates Spring Conference, not to exceed $779.85. Kay Heil, one day, Columbus, Ohio, Supreme Court Mediators Roundtable Meeting, estimated not to exceed $128.94. And then Kay Heil, one day, Columbus, Ohio, Supreme Court Managing Parties with Limited or No Capacity for Mediation Training, estimated not to exceed $128.94. Michael Finney, three days, Sandusky, Ohio, for the Association of Magistrates Spring Conference, estimated not to exceed $311.85. Clermont County Court of Common Pleas, Adult Probation Department, Victoria Carpinello, Shauna Eppards, Colleen Colon, and Rodney Kroom, two days, Columbus, Ohio, the Ohio Justice Alliance for Community Corrections Second Annual Collaborative Symposium, estimated not to exceed $1,791.04. Prosecuting Attorney's Office, Jason Fountain, one day, Cincinnati, Ohio, National Business Institute Continuing Legal Education, Estimated not to exceed zero. Cool. County Sheriff's Office, Chris Barlier and Ryan Patton, three days, Blue Ash, Ohio, Cincinnati Hamilton County Homeland Security Training Course, Law Enforcement Active Shooter, not to exceed zero. Jeffrey Sellers and Christopher Stratton, two days, Dayton, Ohio, Greater Dayton Association of Baptist Penn State Justice and Safety Institute Police Program Training, entitled Police Conduct. Estimated not to exceed $690. We have one undercover agent, six days, Richfield, Ohio, for Certified Mobile Examiner's course, estimated not to exceed $4,767.54. We have four undercover agents, one day in Hamilton, Ohio, Butler Technologies Public Safety Education Complex, not to exceed zero. Kevin Lindsley, one day in London, Ohio, Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy course, Community Diversity Instructor Update, estimated to exceed zero. And Meredith Walsh, three days Liberty Township, Butler Tech course, Field Training Officer, not to exceed $230. County Auditor's Office, Melissa Latham, three days, Columbus, Ohio, for the Auditor of State Dave Yoss, 17th Annual Local Governments Officials Conference, not to exceed $827. Claremont County Water Resources Department, Melissa Hensley, three days, Columbus, Ohio, the Ohio Training Committee of Ohio Water Workshop and Res Reservoir Management Workshop, estimated not to exceed $145.85. Tim Nyer, two days, Columbus, Ohio, the Operator Training Committee of Ohio Reservoir Management Workshop, not to exceed $530.85. And Kelly Barrett, up to six months for completion of the Technical Learning College online course entitled Basic Electricity CEU Training Course, estimated not to exceed $150. Claremont County Emergency Management Agency, Pam Havercross, three days, Columbus, Ohio, the Ohio Emergency Management Agency Spring Directors Conference, estimated not to exceed $392. And the Board of County Commissioners, Tom Eigel, two days, Columbus, Ohio, for the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation 2016 Congress and Exposition, not to exceed $266. And Robert Sander and Debbie Beck, two days for the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation, 2016, Congress and Exposition, not to exceed $262.60. Is there a motion then to approve our training and travel requests as recommended? So moved. Second. 
Shubal. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Personal actions. Ten, please. Department of Job and Family Services, Bobby Myers, Inconvenience Worker 3, uh, Short Term Disability Leave, Effective 210. Laura Fourth Uber, Social Services Aid 2, Probation, End of Probation, Effective 222, Billing Inspection Department, Margaret Simpson, uh, Permit Specialist 2 for Unpaid Leave, Effective 223, and Margaret Simpson, Permit Specialist 2, Termination Resignation, Effective 331, Department Transportation Connection, Jamie Holcomb, Vehicle Operator, uh, Short Term Disability Leave, Effective 212, Telecommunications Division, Jeffrey Weaver, Cabling Coordinator, End of probation, effective 223. Do we have that add on? Bob, do we have that add on? Um, Could you please? Yes. For the Water Resources Department, oh, I'm sorry, James Drake. Um, the uh, It's a demotion. Um, job title is maintenance technician one, and it's effective today. All right. Is there a motion then to approve the personal action forms with the additional one as recommended? I'll make the uh, motion for the uh, personal actions. A second. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. And um, now it's time for our Claremont County Department of Community and Economic Development presentation on our C Community Development Block Grant Project Selection for Fiscal Year 2016. You're on. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, how about that? All right. We had our first public information meeting, which was held <coughs> on October 5th. We passed out um, the application packets. We had a deadline for application of January 6th. On that date, we received 12 applications. Um, five of those applications were ineligible. Um, five? I'm sorry. How many were? Five were oh. ineligible. Mm -hmm. Um, either by CDBG guidelines or um, county defined ineligibility activities. So this slide shows the applications that we received. Uh, the top are the projects that were eligible. They're Claremont County Health District for septic rehab, Williamsburg for sewer improvements, uh, senior services would wish to do senior um, home repairs, people working cooperatively for um, home repairs. Owensville uh, wishes to do some street improvements as well as the city of Milford, a park improvement, uh, Habitat for Humanity, CASC, which we already have for substance abuse counseling, and housing opportunities made equal for fair housing services. Um, the ineligible ap ap activities are below Habitat for Humanity. Both of them, they wanted to build new, new houses. Buildings are ineligible under CDBG. Uh, Ohio Township wishes to purchase an ambulance. And then the Village of Moscow and the Village of New Richmond were ineligible as they conduct government offices out of the buildings that they want to do repairs, and that's ineligible through CDBG. Now, what made the ambulance purchase ineligible? Uh, Board of County Commissioners, um, we this has been a kind of an ongoing policy uh, over, I think, pretty much the whole time I've been here, except for one year, uh, the board. Well, we have bought fire. Well, there was, one, there was one year, which was in 2012, where the board opened it up to communities to buy rolling stock. Rolling stock. Uh -huh. and that was the year that um, that's all we did, basically, was rolling stock. Uh, 2012, there was a, two ambulances and one fire truck, and then uh, that was it besides septic rehab and fair housing. Um, but I thought rolling stock wasn't just the commissioners. It was actually coming down from above that the CDGV were. It, it, is, it is not. It was, it was the Board of County Commissioner's uh, policy, and, and it was we did touch base with you on that again last year before we started the, the new round, which that first hearing was in October. I want to verify that that was your continuing uh, desire as a, as a board. Well, I think with the mindset that if you open it up to rolling stock, that's all you're going to get is, has been kind of the previous thought on that. Um, uh, that's all you're going to get as far as applications and, and do you want to use the CDBG program as the equipment replacement for local fire and EMS districts? Um, because that's all we saw the one year that it was opened up for that. 
So you can, of course, change that at any time, but we're just going off of last year's guidance that we received on eligibility. I do know that they're, they're eligible for the um, fire grants. Uh, I don't know if someone's given them information about that or not. Which fire grants, it's a national thing where they will, it's a grant for equipment. I gave that Ohio Township by the applicator, the application you gave me, Steve. What was that for? That was... That's a new statewide capital program mm -hmm. for basically for equipment for first responders. But it's only about a, a month long window that they can apply right. for. And it's a hundred thousand dollar cap per political subdivision, unless you teamed up with other political subdivisions, in which case you can accumulate up to five hundred thousand. Okay. Well, I know they said the fire grants they'd be eligible for. Now, I'm not sure. I think USDA Rural Development might also have a funds for, for those kind of things as well. So as long as they know there's other options besides CDBG. We'll make, we'll make sure that they get that information. Okay. So we did receive our um, allocation information from CDBG on Friday. Uh, we did receive a 3% reduction in our CDBG funds. So last year we received $932,702 and this year we will receive $900,466. The column on the left, if we funded every application that we received as they requested it, we would be at a $49,494 deficit. Uh, our department is recommending funding all of the applications that we received that were eligible. Uh, our recommendation is that um, Claremont County Health District requested $200,000 for this year and they received $150,000 last year. And by keeping their funding even as last year's at $150,000, and some minor tweaks and adjustments in the um, application funding amounts, we would be at an even zero. Um, and that is our recommendation for this year. Now I did supply um, brief synopsises for you all on Friday to read about the different projects and where it hit um, in our Objectives, our state objectives. Did you receive those? The packets? Don't know. The, I, okay. I received, didn't, didn't look at it though, be honest. Now tell me about the public service cap. CDBG states that we can only provide public service, and right now our only public service is CASC. Um, we can only fund it at 15% and we are only allowed 20% for administration. So that's capped. Um, we actually, the, if you would see the administration, 20% would be 180,000. Mm -hmm. We are only planning on taking 170,000 in administrative costs. We are adding an $8,000 um, allocation for fair housing outreach, which fair housing outreach right now we are doing Coles tools for schools. We are supplying backpacks for children who normally would not be able to have it and school supplies. We've done that in previous years, but that has always been through the CHIP program, which we will not have this year, but it is very good for the community. Um, and it all has the fair housing logo on it and the information for contacting for fair housing. So the fair housing outreach is coming out of our administration? It is. Rather than the, rather than the fair housing amount from home? Yes, it's really important to keep the amount into the fair housing so that we could actually do fair housing services within the community, that 15,000. It's a little bit easier to make recommendations this year because we have, for distribution. Um, we're able to fund all of the eligible projects. No, the contract for the home is $15,000 and they handle all of the fair housing services for the year. So I know prior years we've gotten multiple recommendations.
that's yeah, the one can two. Mm -hmm. because there's always been more applications than there is funding, but that's not the case this year. My timeline um, is I must have our annual action plan submitted to the state the third week of May. The last day of the third week of May is May 20th. Um, I have to have approved um, programs from the County of Commissioners to uh, create that plan. We have to have a 30-day comment period. So my calculations are we have to have our plan completed and we have to advertise for the 30-day comment period no later than April 14th so that it could be presented to the Board of County Commissioners on the May 18th um, Commissioner agenda, which is the last date that we could do it. Now, I know that you mentioned a for us a comment period. Do, do we have the requirement to have the public hearings as well? That would, the um, Commissioner's meeting would be the final public hearing. Okay. The first one was actually back in October. Yeah, so Correct. Correct. We still have the two. We started way yes. earlier than So when do you need to have the uh, approval from us by? Well, since don't say today, but May I mean, after, it, after it's, today. it's not going to be today. Um, <laughs> since I will be creating our action plan for the very first time, mm -hmm. I would like to have time to complete it correctly. Um, what is our normal recommendation period? I'd have to go back and I mean this is this is the first year that we're not doing a, con a consolidated plan and we're right. doing this process from the start so we'll we'll get back to you with the dates on that besides the May 18th date. So in other words soon. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Please. <laughs> David any questions? Nope. Nope. All right Sherry good job. Thank you. Steve do we have anything else? Uh, I do not sir. All right we'll take a five minute recess to uh, have our minutes prepared. All right, I'll let the record show the board came out of recess back into regular session. And we have the minutes from today's session in front of us. Is there a motion to approve today's minutes? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from January 29th, 2016. I will second that. Excusable. Yes. Too proud. Yay. Uh, again, no further business. This is a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. Excusable. Yes. Too proud. Yay. And thank you all, and God bless.